please hit that subscribe button. Hey, everybody. Better suited to win the Stanley Cup this season. If you are new to the channel, the Washington Capitals, the Boston Bruins. Locked out and he scores. And we're live. Hey, everybody. So, big video today. I am going to be ranking the eight play-in series for the NHL playoffs this year when hockey comes back. Um, based on which ones I am most excited for, which ones I think will be the most fun and entertaining to watch, and just overall, I am personally most excited for. And I'm going to be putting them in order, one or eight through one, and just talking about each series and why I think that that will be a really fun one and particularly great one to watch. Now, before I begin, I just ask that you please hit that subscribe button if you are new and give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. Both of those things really, really help out the channel a lot and are very, very much appreciated. And but uh, yeah, let's get let's get started. And before I start, I want to say that this is strictly my opinion. So. You know, just because I have a series, you know, ranked somewhere where you don't is not that's it's just my opinion that I might be looking for different things in a matchup than what you like. Or, or you know, maybe I'm looking for a certain type of a matchup and you're looking for another type. It, It's just my opinion. I think they're all going to be great. Um and just having hockey back in general is going to be great. It's not that I'm not excited for any of these series. It's just some of them pique my interest a little bit more. Some of them I'm a little bit more excited about. And, you know, the ones at the top are series that I want to watch every single second of, where the ones at the bottom are ones that, you know, if there's another game going on, I'll probably be watching the other game. But I'm excited for all of it. It's going to be incredible no matter what series it is. Let's get into it here, starting with number eight. This is the one I am least excited about, and it is Vancouver versus Minnesota. Now, I like Vancouver a lot. I'm a big fan of this year's Canucks team. I talked about them a lot on this channel this year. Um, this matchup, though, just I think there are better, more exciting ones. Um, you know, there's no real natural rivalry between the Wild and Canucks. They don't play in the same division. And I think excitement-wise, this one, this series is probably going to be a little bit more on the boring side compared to some of the other ones. And um, while I do think it, I mean, hockey, it's going to be fun no matter what. Um, this is one that, that doesn't overly pique my interest compared to some of the other matchups we have that we're going to be talking about as this goes along. And there's just, I, there's just, maybe it will surprise me. Maybe there's, every year there's a playoff series going into it that I think like, oh, this isn't going to be that great. And then it ends up just being one of the best series and most exciting to watch of the entire playoffs. And last year that it was the first round matchup between Carolina and Washington. Um, I didn't think anything of that series going in. And then all of a sudden it was one of my favorite series of the entire playoffs. So Things can change, but you know, before everything starts, I'm looking at these on paper, and Vancouver versus Minnesota is at number eight for me. At number seven, we have Edmonton versus Chicago. Uh, this is another one out west where a lot of people are talking about Chicago maybe upsetting Edmonton. I just, how in the world is Chicago's defense going to shut down Connor McDavid and Leon Drysaddle? I just don't see any way that that can happen. I think Edmonton kind of runs over the Blackhawks in this series. Corey Crawford is a shell of his former self. The Blackhawks' defense is is pretty bad when you look at it. I mean, Duncan Keith, not the player that he used to be. Brent Seabrook doesn't even belong in the league. Um, it's it, you know this is not the 2015 or 2013 Chicago Blackhawks. This is. This is a team that is was is not a playoff team for a reason and was finishing 12th in the conference for a reason. Um, so I don't really see that one being that close. At number six, I have the New York Islanders versus Florida Panthers. Now this is an intriguing matchup because you have the very defense first, shut down defense, not a lot of offense New York Islanders versus the high scoring offense but absolutely no defense and bad goaltending Florida Panthers. Um, so the dynamic there is actually pretty cool between, you know, the defensive mentality versus the offensive mentality. Um, but again, the, there's no real rivalry between these teams. There's nothing that really um, makes it stand out to me thinking that it's going to be, you know, some spectacular series. And, um, you know, it, it might be pretty fun to watch, but I don't think either of those teams are that great this year either. Whereas, you um, 
you know, like New York was really struggling and they were probably dropping out of the playoffs if the season had continued on normally. Florida wasn't going to make it. Uh, that. You know, they're, they're two teams that should they even still, you know, normal, if they went, if we went straight to a 16-team playoffs, would either of these teams actually be in it? That, I, I don't know. Number five, we have Pittsburgh versus Montreal. Um, this one, this one is, you know, an interesting series. There's so many people talking about, um, you know, Montreal possibly upsetting the Penguins. And that, similar to the Chicago-Edmonton one, I just don't get Carey Price, yes, they have Montreal has Carey Price, and Carey Price is a great goaltender. But this is not 2014 Carey Price anymore. He is not the far and away best goalie in the world, and he would have to play absolutely out of his mind for basically five games for Montreal to beat Pittsburgh. And I just don't, I just don't see that happening. Um, yeah, I, Penguins are going to have Jake Gensel back. They're going to be, you know, completely healthy with the exception of Nick Bugstad. And they've still got Crosby. They've still got Malkin. They've still got, you know, Latang on the back end. Um, they added Zucker at the deadline. This Penguins team just has too much firepower to lose to a team like Montreal, who probably shouldn't even be even playing games anymore. But, you know, Montreal's not very good, guys. They're not. Um, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh should, should win this series rather easily. Uh, I might give the Canadians a game, but I don't think it's going to be the huge upset that a lot of people are talking about. Now we're getting into the top four here, and these are all series that I think are going to be really, really good. Starting with Nashville versus Arizona at number four. This is going to be a hell of a series. Uh, obviously you have Arizona who was having a great season, and then Darcy Kemper got hurt, and their season really went downhill from there. They were not going to make the playoffs if things had continued normally. Lucky for them, things did not continue normally, and now they do have a chance to sneak in if, if they can win this series. Uh, very defensive-minded team, not a lot of offense there, but spectacular defense and goaltending. Versus Nashville, who is a very talented team, but was one of the biggest disappointments in the league this season and really, really underachieved this year. So it's going to be interesting. Does Nashville, does this stoppage kind of give them a chance to hit the reset button? And Nashville could be a team that comes out of this stronger than they were going in and could really make some noise in you know this, this these playoffs. Or does Arizona getting Darcy Kemper back return them to being one of the top teams in the West and uh, and allow Arizona to make some noise? So this, is, I think, is going to be a very, very close series, a very low-scoring, hard-fought series, and it's going to be absolutely awesome to watch. At number three, we've got Calgary versus Winnipeg. I am super excited for this. This is going to be, I think... Of all the series, I think this one, if I had to pick, if you told me only one series is going the full five games, I think more than that are going to go the five games. But if you told me one series is only is going to go to the five games, this is going to be the series I would pick to go five games. These two teams are so close. And there's certainly, even though they're not from the same division, there's certainly a Western Canadian rivalry there. Um, they're both kind of big, heavy, big boy hockey teams. Um, so that's obviously really fun uh, to watch, and it fits playoff style hockey perfectly. And then you know they're so evenly matched, I think, and so close. You've got you know Calgary with their big top line, uh, and then you know but questions about depth, questions about depth on defense. Then you have the goaltending, and then in Winnipeg you have a goaltender who should have probably been a. Vi uh, should be certainly in the Vesna conversation for this year as one of the best goalies in the league behind a very weak defense core that uh, really is lacking star power at this point after losing so many uh, players uh, in the offseason with Bufflin leaving and all of that. So, you know, but a very high powered offense in Winnipeg where you've got a top six in Winnipeg that is is I mean near up there with anyone in the league as far as the top six goes talent and scoring wise so um, you know that's going to be a really really fun series very entertaining a lot of action and I cannot wait for that one at number two I have Carolina versus the New York Rangers I cannot wait for this this is going to be absolutely incredible um, 
The Rangers owned the Hurricanes in the regular season this year. Um, New York beat Carolina all four times they played. Both are like the are young up and coming teams that are going to be you know pop superpowers in the league down the road. Um, it's it's just it's got you know who does New York play in goal? They have three goaltenders. They have Shesterkin. They've got uh, Georgiev, and they've got Lundqvist still there, even though Lundqvist didn't play a whole lot in the second part of the regular season. Who's who's New York going to go with in goal? I mean, Henrik Lundqvist is not the goalie that he used to be. Shesterkin looks like the future. Georgiev played the most this year, so it's so it's so so many interesting storylines. The Rangers, obviously, a very popular pick as being, you know, one of the best up-and-coming teams in the league and teams with the brightest future. I've talked about that on this channel. Um, and then you've got Carolina, who, very similar to the Rangers, are a largely young team with a ton of talent. They were in the Eastern Conference Finals last year, um, and, and they want to go deep into the playoffs again this year, and there's goaltending questions there with Mrazek and Reimer. Um, they don't have that real elite goaltender, but Mrazek can get hot. We've seen that. Um, it's it's going to be really, really interesting. That is going to be one hell of a series without a doubt. And that leaves only number one, and by now you must know what it is. It is Toronto versus Columbus. I cannot wait for this. This, I think, might be the closest um, series potentially. Um, or it could, it depends on Toronto's defense, I think. If Toronto can stop, can, you know, if Columbus can't score, Toronto's going to run away with this series. If Columbus can keep this close, then they have a real shot of knocking off Toronto here. This is going to be a really, really interesting series because of the dynamic, and it's the same dynamic as the Islanders uh, Panthers series as well, where you have Toronto, who is a high flying offensive team. But we know that they have, you know, a lot of question marks defensively. And then you have Columbus, who has a shutdown defense, get have gotten great goaltending from their two young goalies this year, but really struggle to score and don't have much offense in that in, on that team. So it's kind of the same dynamic, but it's with two better teams, which is why I put Toronto and Columbus way up here at number one, because I cannot wait for this series. And New York and Florida is all the way down at number six, because it's two better teams. Columbus is a better team than the New York Islanders. Toronto is a better team than the Florida Panthers. So it's the same dynamic with even better teams, more talent, more fun to watch. And uh, I think it's just going to be an outstanding series. I definitely think it's going five games. Columbus, I mean, after they knocked off Tampa Bay last year in the first round as a wild card team, there is n there's no way you could say that they don't have a chance to knock off Toronto this year. Um, in Toronto, I, you know, they get Jake Muzzin back, Morgan Riley's back. Their defense, you know, is in better shape now with those two back than it was when the season was paused. Um, you know, maybe they, maybe Toronto does play well enough defensively, and obviously we know they have the offense and, and are able to really make a run this year. So it's going to be really, really interesting. But uh, those are my rankings for the play-in series, guys, as far as which ones I am most excited to see, most excited to watch, and think will be the most uh, fun and entertaining. At uh, number eight, we have Vancouver versus Minnesota. At seven, Edmonton versus Chicago. At six, New York versus Florida. Five, Pittsburgh versus Montreal. Four, Nashville versus Arizona. Three, Calgary and Winnipeg. Two, Carolina versus the New York Rangers. And at one, Toronto versus Columbus. I'm excited for all of these series. It's going to be incredible to have hockey back. There is no doubt about it. Um, but if I had to put them in some order of rankings as far as which ones I'm most excited for, that is it. So, um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. With that, uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. All those links are down in the description below. If you'd like to further support the channel, the links to our Patreon and merchandise store are down in the description as well. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. Thank you very, very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you guys very soon.